Hi, Algebra 2. This is Unit 4, Lesson 9, and today we're going to talk about graphs of logarithms. So we're going to consider the logarithmic function y equals log base 3 of x and its inverse y equals 3 to x. So I'm actually going to start by doing this one, y equals 3 to x. That's one that you could put into your calculator or you could actually just do it without your calculator. So like, say I put in 0 for x, 3 to the 0 is 1. And then say I put in 1 for x, 3 to the 1 is 3. I put in 2 for x, 3 squared is 9. Put in negative one, that makes it one third. Put in negative two, that makes it one ninth. Now you can actually put this into your graphing calculator also, if you're more comfortable doing that. And that just disappeared, here we are. So let's plot those points. So I have zero, one, and I have one, three, and I have two, nine, and I have negative one, one third, negative two, and one ninth, so it's getting closer and closer to that line, the x-axis, right? That's an asymptote, and that's my graph. Now, how do I do y equals log base 3 of x? You can put that into your calculator also, or this is just the inverse. Now, how do I know it's the inverse? Let's take y equals 3 to the x, and when I do the inverse, I flip-flop the x and the y, Okay, so I have x equals 3 to the y, and then this, remember, is that exponent is my answer, y equals log base 3 of x. So there you go, it's just the inverse. So if it's just the inverse and I know that, then I can just flip-flop these points. So this will be 1 ninth negative 2, 1 third negative 1, um, 1 0, 3 1, and 9 2. Okay, and then I'll graph those. So I have um, 1, 0, 3, 1, 9, 2, and I have 1 third, negative 1, and I have 1 ninth, negative 2. It's getting closer and closer to that x, uh, to the y axis. And the inverse, remember, is just a reflection over the line y equals x. So that's my answer, so I did it. Let's talk about the domain and the range. So if we're looking at my exponential function, y equals 3 to the x, um, my domain or my x's, so I'm looking at my purple line right there, I'm looking left-right. Is there a leftmost point? No, there's not. Is there a rightmost point? No, there's not. So my my domain are all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. My range are my y's. Is there a bottom no most point right there? I'm looking up down. Um, there actually is. It's never going past zero and it actually never is zero. So zero and is there a topmost point? There is not. Now when I'm talking about the inverse, the domain and the range, remember just flip-flop. So my domain should be zero infinity and my range should be negative infinity, infinity. But look at the graph of the, um, the log. My domain are my x's. Leftmost point, it actually never goes past zero, so that's why I have zero. Rightmost point, it goes forever, infinity. And range are my y's, up, down. Bottommost point, nope, there's an arrow. Topmost point, nope, there's an arrow. All right, so. Here we go, exercise two. Using your calculator, sketch the graph of y equals log base 10 of x on the axes below. So I want you to put this right into your graphing calculator. You can look at the picture, and I suggest that you find some, um, some points as well. But if you look at your table, one zero is a point, and 10, one is a point. Okay, so I have 10 on there. And let me just divide this up in half. That will be 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Try and make this look as accurate. This is just a sketch, so it does not have to be anything perfect. All right, that's 2, so I'll put 1 right there. And again, I had um, 1, 0, so that's going to be right there. And then I had 10, 1, that's going to be there. And if you looked at the way it looked in your graphing calculator, if you looked at a picture of it, it was like that. Okay, that's my exponential graph. The domain, it the domain are my x's. It's never going past zero. So it's x is greater than zero. 
and my range are all numbers from, from negative infinity to infinity, so you can just say it's all real numbers, okay? It's never touching zero, though, because if you think about it, 10 to what power equals zero? It doesn't work. There is no number, so there's no y-intercept. And we saw that by looking at the picture on our graphing calculator. All right. Flip this over. Characteristics of log graphs. So it's just some things that you should keep in mind. Just a little summary right here. So my domain for all my log graphs are going to be from 0 to infinity. It is a function. It passes a vertical line test. All right. There's a graph right here that I'm looking at. The x-intercept. The x-intercept is 1, and this is assuming I'm not shifting at all. The asymptote, the line that it approaches, is the y-axis. So my asymptote is x equals 0. It's getting closer and closer and never touching it. My range are my y's. It goes from negative infinity to infinity. Is it 1 to 1? Absolutely, it passes the horizontal line test. Is there a y-intercept? There is not a y-intercept. What is the relationship between a logarithm and its exponential? They are actually inverses of each other. All right. Looking at three, which of the following equations describe, describes the graph shown below? Show or explain how you made your choice. So if we're looking at it, this is key right here. This point one, one is a point. So I can just take it and plug it in. All right. Also keep in mind that a basic log function, the one that we looked at up above, all right, it goes vertical at the y-axis. So if I have log base b of x, it as the asymptote was x equals 0. That's the line that it's approaching. This one is not. It's shifted over. So this one is approaching negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So I have shifted it over 3. All right, so keep that in mind. Like this one right here, I've shifted it to. So that's not going to work. All right, so I've shifted it two to the left. This one, I shifted three to the right. Well, that's not right either. I'm shifting three to the left. So both of those are basically out. All right, I'm not going to pick those. And three, both choice three and four are both shifting three to the uh, left, which is what I want. So this is perfect. This is perfect. So all I would do is I would test out the point one one. So I'm going to plug in the point one one and see it if it actually works. So right here, I'm going to do log base two, one plus three, minus one. Well, one plus three is four. So basically, I have log base two of four, which is two, and two minus one is one. So it works. If I tested out this one, I have log base 3 of 1 plus 3, which is 4, and log base 3 of 4, okay, is not an integer. So that can't be the answer because it should go through the point 1, 1. All right, so it is choice 3. I talked a little bit about this in class, just the domain issues. So just a review of some domain issues, and we'll talk about domains of logs. Remember, denominators cannot, equal, uh, cannot be equal to zero, so you can't have zero in the denominator of a fraction. If you have a square root, it cannot be a negative number, so it has to be greater than or equal to zero. And if you have a square root that's in the denominator, it can't be zero and it can't be negative, so I say it's greater than zero. Logarithms create a new domain issue. We cannot find the logarithm of a non-positive number, meaning it can't be negative and it can't be zero. It's just not possible in the real number system. You can only take the log of a positive number. So when we're doing this, basically this, whatever the log base b can be anything, but whatever comes after it, that thing has to be greater than zero. So look how easy this is to do. I'm just going to take whatever I'm taking the log of, and that cannot be negative, and it cannot be equal to zero. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, and I'm going to set it equal to greater than zero. And that I don't have to solve. That's already done for me. So my answer is x, such that x is greater than zero. This one I'm going to take x plus 3 and set it equal to greater than 0. 
So I have x greater than negative 3, uh, x such that x is greater than negative 3. All right, and then I'm going to take 8 minus x and set it equal to greater than 0. So I'm just figuring out the domain for each of these functions. I subtract 8, so I have negative 8. But I have to divide by negative 1. And remember, when you're dividing by negative not, uh, 1, it flips that inequality around. So it's actually x such that x is less than 8. All right, and then the last one, 3x minus 4, is greater than 0. 3x is greater than 4. x is greater than 4 thirds. So basically, x such that x is greater than 4 thirds is my domain. All right, let's see what we got on the next page. Um, doo -doo. Looks like I have some writing here. Oh, because I, uh, I didn't delete this, because I already did this video and the audio wasn't working, so it's right here. So we're just gonna keep this for now. Um, just I'll explain this and you can write it down. All logarithms with bases larger than one are always increasing. This increasing nature can be seen by calculating their average rate of change. So let's just think of the common log. And remember, my common log is always base 10. So if I have f of x equals log of x, I'm talking about base 10 because there's no number written there. So it's always assumed that I'm in base 10 if there's no number. Let's set up and find the average rate of change of, x of f of x over the interval from negative 1 to 10. So basically, you're going to do f of 10 minus f of 1 over 10 minus 1. That means I'm doing the log of 10 minus the log of 1 over 9, because 10 minus 1 is 9. The log of 10, you can do it in your calculator, is 1. The log of 1, you can do in your calculator, is 0. And then 1 minus 0 is 9, so that's 1 ninth. Okay? I'm going to also do the average rate of change for the interval from 1 to 100. So that's f of 100 minus f of 1 over 100 minus 1. f of 100 means log of 100, which is 2. Do it in your calculator. If you're not, you know, can't be able to do it in your head, that's fine. Lo uh, log of 1, which we already did, was 0. And 100 minus 1 is 91, 99. So 2 minus 0 is 2 over 99. All right. So what do these answers tell me about the changing slope of this function? The slope is getting smaller as x gets larger. So picture this. I'm like walking up a hill. So first it's like super, super, super steep. And then as x is, get, is going on and on, as x gets larger, my slope is actually getting smaller. It's still going up. It's like you're look, this person right here walking up this hill. It's super, super steep in the very, very beginning, and then it sort of gradually gets less and less steep. Okay? And then just, just a quick little review on the change of base formula. So the change of base formula um, for logarithms, and this is what we were working with in class. So this you already know. So um, a graph in calculators, when you hit that log button, the button that's next to the 7, that's log base 10, all right? So what I do is log base b, so any base, and then I have something. You take the log of whatever that is, that goes on top, and then the denominator is log of b. The base goes to the bottom, okay? So we do these in class. These are, should just be very simple for you. So I have log base 3 of x. So the x stays on top, log of x is on top, and log base 3 goes to the bottom. So you're taking the log of each of those terms. For b, I'm going to take the log of x plus 1, that goes to the top, and the log of 6, that goes to the bottom. Now these I can't evaluate because i got x's in them. c, I can actually evaluate. So I'm going to have log of 37 over log of 4. And that goes right into my calculator. This here goes into my calculator. And I get 2.604. All right, and it says round it to the nearest hundredth. So the hundredth is my second decimal place. So I'm going to leave this as 2.60. So basically, 
And that makes perfect sense if you think about it. I'm saying 4 to what power is 37? 4 squared is 16. 4 to the third is 64. All right, so it has to be in between. 37 is in between 16 and 64. It's going to be 2 point something, and it was 2.6. All right, and the last one, log base 2 of 623. So the log of 623 over the log of 2. I'm just going to grab my graphing calculator because I didn't write this answer down. They want me to round it off. So log of 623, make sure you close your parentheses. You can do this with me, divided by log of 2. And I get 9.283. And I want the hundreds place, so I'm going to leave it as 9.28. Okay, and that's it.